Hi, welcome back to Save It For Parts. Today I'm going to start working on a potato cannon. Now there are probably a million videos out there that will tell you how to build a potato cannon. And in fact I've built quite a few of them myself. Basic potato cannon design is pretty simple. You've got a chamber, you've got a place to spray in a fuel such as hairspray or starting fluid, and you've got a barrel that's a smaller diameter where you put your potato. And then you've got some kind of ignition source. This one is a barbecue igniter and that sparks your chamber full of fuel propelling the potato out hopefully in that direction. The other major style is pneumatic or compressed air. This one is pretty rough but it's got a basic chamber holding the compressed air, a fill valve, a gauge, an ignition system, and that ignition system activates this electronic valve, sending the air into the barrel and shooting out the potato. One thing that's nice about this design is that the barrel is removable, so you can put different sizes on here to shoot things like paintballs, or in my case I use this smaller barrel to shoot cherry tomatoes. And it turns out that a cherry tomato can do quite a bit of damage to a car door. So don't try that at home. Now I do have a variety of PVC pipe back here, but I don't have much for size changers, end caps, and other connectors. So I'll be running to the hardware store to pick up just a few more parts that I need to build this combustion cannon. So this always happens when I go to the hardware store. I go in there for two pieces and I end up buying the rest of the plumbing department. So that was about $50 worth of PVC parts and I think I can make two potato cannons out of all this stuff. Another upgrade that I'm planning to do with this potato cannon is to have a built-in fuel and ignition system using something like a propane torch. So I can fill the chamber with the propane by half clicking it and then ignite it by clicking the trigger to the ignition part. I've done this before. I've used some propane torches for a couple of my other potato cannons in the past and I'm thinking of getting something like a remote hose that goes from the propane tank to the torch so that it's not just this huge weight hanging off the bottom of the potato gun. I might play around with some other improvements such as a repeatable feeding system for ammunition like bouncy balls and I might do a better pneumatic gun that looks a little prettier than my duct tape special here. But those will be future videos. For now, I'm just going to focus on the basics of a propane powered potato cannon. And the basics for what I have now are the barrel, an adapter for the barrel, which is going to go to this screw mount connector. And this is the screw mount opposite the female end, which is going to go onto my chamber. Then I have the end cap. And this is the basic combustion chamber of the potato gun. That threaded adapter lets me put different barrels on it. And for an ignition source, I need to find a way to put this torch into the back of the combustion chamber. There are a few different options for these two-part epoxies. Some of them only work on plastic, some of them are more designed for metal, and you want to try to get one that is equally good at both, because for something like this you're bonding PVC plastic and the metal of the torch. I used quite a bit here because I want this to hold up to what's essentially multiple explosions in a row. And I'll screw the tip onto this torch. So once this end cap is mounted onto the combustion chamber, the tip of the torch will be inside 
and that will be providing both the fuel and the ignition source. I also have this other two-part epoxy, which is more like a modeling clay or putty. And this stuff actually says that it sets up underwater and sets up with pretty high strength and cures in an hour. I've actually used this particular one for potato guns in the past. I think when I was uh, 11 or 12, I epoxied one of my dad's torches into a potato cannon. And he wasn't too happy about that because it turns out these torches are really expensive if you buy them new. The torch I'm using now is one that I got on eBay fairly cheap. But if you went into the hardware store to pick up one of these new, it might run you around $50 just for the torch head. So this stuff comes as kind of a two-part clay or epoxy, and you just smash the two parts together until it's one mixed kind of blobby gray color, and then you can shape it into any form that you want. So I've molded my epoxy clay around the torch nozzle and into the chamber. And I've actually done this before with just one layer of epoxy on one side of the chamber. Now remember we put the other kind of epoxy on the inside to seal up and hold the torch inside from both ends of this end cap. And I feel pretty safe about having my hand near here with a propane explosion going off inside the chamber because with two layers of epoxy those hot gases and pressure are not getting out. So while I'm waiting for that epoxy to set up I brought my pipes inside briefly to let them warm up a little bit. It's currently about 40 degrees out here, which is borderline for the PVC cement. It likes to be somewhere between 40 and 100 degrees. So I brought this inside to warm up. I brought my cement inside to warm up. And I don't want to actually do the cementing inside because it stinks and it puts off some more fun fumes. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these pipes together. This is essentially no different than normal plumbing at this point. We're just using the purple primer to clean and prime the surfaces and then this PVC cement to adhere the pipes together. And it sets up pretty quickly, so you want to make sure you have everything in the right place when you're doing this. Now I should have a propane extension hose somewhere in here. There's a couple. I think this one will fit my torch. Now I also picked up this little torch holster or hanger earlier. I usually like to put a stop screw into my potato gun barrels so that when I'm ramming a potato down the barrel to load it that I don't accidentally push it too far and drop the potato into the chamber. Alrighty, so now I have a fairly ridiculous potato cannon. I've got my fuel and ignition system trigger back here, my chamber, my barrel, my fuel source, and my safety bungee. Now I might joke about safety, but if you're going to build one of these at home, make sure you've got competent adult supervision, not just your drunk redneck relative, not just a video from the internet. In other words, don't try this at home, kids. So, that being said, let's do a quick test shot. Now, I've jammed a piece of non-flammable cloth down this barrel to just serve as a wadding. I don't have a potato in here, I don't have any other projectile, just that cloth. So it should be pretty safe to shoot in my yard without damaging anything or sending potatoes into the neighbor's house.
That was a pretty weak shot. Let's try with a little more pressure in the barrel. Um, I'm gonna jam some snow down there so it's a little tighter seal. That one worked a little better. Now I'm still also calibrating how long it takes to build up enough propane in the chamber before firing it. Now that torch also has some air intakes along the side, so it is mixing air along with the propane inside the chamber. So I don't need a separate air or oxygen intake necessarily. I'd love to test this with a potato right here and right now, but I don't think my neighbors would appreciate high-speed spuds going through their airspace. So I've already found a problem with using these long propane hoses in the winter. They ice up. Nothing comes out. Now compare that to using just a straight tank on the torch. And it actually goes off. I did switch to map gas at one point because it gets a little more power. But uh, neither the map gas nor the propane was flowing through that hose after the first couple shots. And I'm pretty sure it got ice built up inside of it. So I'm going to have to let my remote hose sit for a while and warm up. And I might have to just save the propane cannon for the summer, at least if I want the cool undermounted tank. So that gives me an opportunity to switch over to a pneumatic or compressed air potato gun. And I think that's going to be my next video. So go ahead and subscribe if you want to see that one, or go ahead and check out some of my other videos to see some of the other things I've done. Thanks for watching the Save It For Parts channel.